showing you those in some future images. This is a, a view of the 3D model for the plaza, and we apologize, the sculpture's a little hard to model in, in, in SketchUp, so <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. But we, you see the flagpole, which would be uh, relocated from the existing plaza as, as a, a center of the plaza, all the uplighting, the basic design intent of the original memorial design is all replicated in this, in this new plaza, so that uh, will follow the artist's concept for that. We've surrounded the, uh, the new plaza with a, a low seat wall that would be uh, available for people to sit, relax, and enjoy the sun and, and be in this nice, quiet, uh, dignified space. And we've surrounded it with landscaping. And what you see here in the plaza is some of the colors of the service branches, the, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force. And those are the color bands that you see uh, in this image. The brown bands, the arcs that you see to the north and south of the sculpture are the dedication paver areas. This is a view from down inside the plaza. And the, uh, the round pedestals that you see Within the walls, that's where the service branch signs would be located, and it would Air Force, Navy, obviously, that type of thing. The brown bands you see here in this image are a representation, a graphic representation of the dedication papers. Here's a view uh, from the west going east. The path you see on the left-hand side of the image is the recreational path going around, and that's buffered by the evergreen trees. And so you'd have a set of planters with, with uh, annual flowers, and, uh, and decorative paving throughout. And so this, I think, is going to be a much richer plaza and uh, I think a great space for the public to be in and, and to see as they're, as they're in the site. This is what the, uh, what the community would see as they drive in westbound on Memorial Parkway. Any questions on the Vets Plaza? Thank you. And we do want to make sure that people feel very confident. Um, staff have done a catalog of the memorial pavers that are already in place. FCI is going to duplicate that catalog so that we can make sure um, that all of those bricks are accounted for and stored so that those individuals who have purchased bricks in memory of a loved one or a family member or ha have kind of confidence that those will go back into the new site. So it'll be double cataloged um, and Nathaniel knows how important that is to us that each of those bricks is removed, stored, and then put back. We have about 65 square feet of brick currently out of those four by eight or eight by eight squares. Um, we believe there's about 75 square feet in the new additional. space. Additional, yeah. sorry. 75 feet additional, which equates to um, about 275 additional four by eight bricks that we can open up to the community. Um, we have had some conversation with both, uh, with the Community Foundation, um, who has expressed a willingness to take that project on um, as we move forward. We did talk with, I did speak with Michael as well from an Arts and Humanities Foundation standpoint, um, and he felt like, because I think they had done the previous, taken the lead previously, um, and with their workload currently, um, he didn't feel like they could, they would likely want to take on an, addition, an additional project. Um, so we're exploring those options so that we can open that up probably here in, um, the next nine month, nine to 12 months so that those are and we'll work through that timing so that we receive those completed bricks um, just before they're ready to be installed in the new space uh, moving on to the festival lawn what we've really gone for here is a space that's really multifunctional kind of a, a swiss army nice space something you can use for any number of events uh, concerts it can be used as a, a food truck festival uh, Art Festival, and we've kind of designed the tree placements, the planters, the sidewalks to accommodate vendor tents, and there's going to be power to supplement all that. There'll be, uh, there's lighting throughout the plot, through that, throughout that area, and so that will be available for any number of uses that you would like to program within this space. The, uh, we have a series of plazas. The one on the east end, as, you, as I'm pointing to the screen here, with, is where the, the white tent will be set up, as you see here. And it would have a similar character to what you see in this image here. And uh, that plaza, when the tent is not there, would be available for other functions, like a food truck. We have the central plaza, which also would serve as that function. And then a western plaza. And, that, and each one of these plazas could be set up with seating, uh, we have additional paved areas up and down the, the, the plaza here that would be available for um, loose 
movable seating areas, some of which the city has right now. And here is an example of the, the Denver's Civic Center food truck, which is a larger scale operation, but you can easily accommodate something similar to that within, within this space. The, uh, the turf area is, is, is designed to be draining, free draining, but it is level enough to accommodate the, uh, the uh, foldable chairs and blankets that people would have for uh, concerts and, and events of that nature. And lastly, we'll talk about the outdoor, uh, one of the other major outdoor elements is the uh, preschool play, and that includes the, uh, there, there's an outdoor space that would be associated with that. These are some of the early concepts. These are now going to be synthesized into one concept. We've worked with staff at the last, the last workshop that we just held last week, and we'll, pre we'll move forward with that. And basically, the intent is to have a, an outdoor space that would have uh, a, a variety of play events. It would have um, safety surfacing under the play equipment, and it, it could take a whole. It, it's going to take a series of concepts. Um, we're down to one slide here. So uh, this is just a preliminary concept that uh, will, will evolve as we go. But there would be uh, uh, act, uh, active, active recreation elements for climbing and play. Uh, spaces for assembly, uh, spaces for loose furniture. We, we will likely have a, uh, a garden area uh, with raised beds to uh, uh, grow vegetables and have s uh, plants that have uh, sensory uh, opportunities like uh, touch or smell. And uh, there'll be you know, a picnic table within that space, or a couple picnic tables and shade. And so it'll be a really great fun space for the, the people who come to your preschool area. Question. So the stairs coming down, are those still likely going to be there? We are required to have them as a means of egress. Um, and so those will have a gate at the top of them. They're not meant to be a uh, regular means of accessing, but there's a great differential between the roadway um, and the playground itself. <coughs> Um, so there will be a gate on those. We've talked about how that gets managed. Like, how do you how do you balance the needs of little tiny people that are four years old and like to go check things out and open things, um, and the needs of the fire district, which are very different. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we've had some a lot of conversation about how that's gated, how that access is minimized, having an alarm on that so that if for any reason it were to get opened, either from the inside or the outside, right? When we have preschoolers out there, we don't want somebody opening it from the outside either. Um, and so how having that alarmed, but still meeting the crash bar requirement of the fire district so that if there were a need to use that door that's adjacent, and I'm pointing at it in my head back on the screen here, that doesn't do you any good. Um, so this door here, mm -hmm counts as a means of egress. We have to we have to have that as a means of egress out of the building, which is why there's that direct connection okay. out. Okay. And then also just uh, out of curiosity, so would this play space be available outside of preschool hours? Is this strictly gonna be dedicated to the preschool and we don't want other kids being nope. there? Uh, our intention is that that would be accessible space when it's not being programmed for during preschool hours. Okay. And it can be reached there, there's an access that would go to the north. The north is actually let me look, the lower oh, okay. image, and that that would be ungated. That would not be fenced. So you can be able you'd be able to get in there from that north side, okay. and that's that's also an accessible route as well. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, since the roadway is above the priest the the tot lot, we've integrated um, some seat walls on the outside. So if a vehicle were to accidentally progress would not I mean yeah. it's not a C dot K rail like it's not gonna stop a you know fast moving vehicle but any slow moving traffic would we have accommodated some you know, some stops there okay. for that for me. And this might be jumping the gun a little bit but when we get to the point of looking at vendors can we use a company that is gonna create an inclusive playground for all abilities? So it's definitely a requirement. Um, we have s not selected playground vendor yet. I keep, we've selected our indoor playground vendor, and I keep 
right. mixing up the two. Um, but yes, we haven't selected a, a vendor yet. They will have to create an inclusive playground. That's always a priority of ours is to make sure that it, you can meet ADA requirements pretty darn easily um, without giving kids really anything that's very fun or engaging. Um, we want to make sure that they can't have access more than just the minimal requirements. Minimal requirement, play panels that are at ground level count. Um, those aren't always, those are usually the last thing we see that kids really want to engage with. So, okay, thanks. And the, and the intent of the design right now is to have the rubberized safety surfacing, which is a little more user friendly than the, the wood chip surfacing. Same thing, wood chips meet the ADA requirement, but they're not all that easily, easily maneuvered. Um, we know that that port in place surfacing is a benefit both to kids who have need, who have mobility challenges, but it's also more accessible to all of the other kids. It's a, it's a friendlier play space. Um, and we wanna make sure we have that variety of textures that gives them that port in place surface that's soft, um, but we also want to make sure, as Paul mentioned earlier, that there's natural elements for them to engage with as well, and a variety of textures and a variety of um, elements that are out in that area. Plus, we don't want a pocket full of wood chips coming into the preschool. There's, so. there's practicality Sand. as well. <laughs> Sand is my current issue. Yeah. Um, one other thing I was going to say, if it's possible um, and obviously safe, is there any way to include you know, seating? for parents who have to come here <laughs> several times a week. They don't, so they don't show in these particular images. Um, as Paul said, he tried to forward to the next two. Okay. And I took them out. Okay. Um, and I took them out because we started to kind of narrow the, um, the play space based on the public input that we got. Okay. Um, so what you see up here isn't representative of the actual what exactly is going in that was okay. pretty public engagement um, but during the design development phase um, so I didn't want you to see three different images and think you were picking from those three um, because at this stage Paul is taking the information he's received from staff and from the public engagement and putting together that more final plan one of the three actually showed you a lot more in terms I keep stealing this back um, one of the three actually showed I think a series of tables and a shade structure okay. here um, versus the shade structure here. Some of them show more tables down this direction. So we're still playing with the exact um, arrangement. We believe, based on the input we received, that we're leaning towards a kind of a fun agricultural theme, which lets us bring in things like tractors and barns and growing things and spaces to let the kids do demonstration garden um, and access to that variety of natural elements as well. So by the time we get to the end of CDs, you'll see how he's made all of our wish list get incorporated in there. Um, right? Yes. Of all of it? That would ever <laughs> um, but, but, but it's a great yes, suggestion. CD is a part of that. It's a good suggestion because, for instance, if you know, there would be a way, for instance, that perhaps on the raised planters that we have, we could incorporate a, a seat bench as part of that or as part of the design. So there are things that we can do to enhance that opportunity and uh, maybe more loose furniture as well. And staff wants to have spaces. I mean, that was, as we talked about the plan that had the tables, I'm just going to take that. As we talked about the plan that kind of had tables lined up here, staff really liked that as some outdoor classroom space that they're able to do, sit down and do an activity outside. It's not necessarily just we're going to play on the playground, but they can really program that space with, with our preschoolers. Anything else? All right. Excellent. Daniel is up then with the building itself. This is the fun part. <laughs> Yours was I mean, the outside's fun too. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Hello everybody, thanks for having us back. We're excited to be at this phase um, and to see everybody smiling and excited uh, to move forward. Um, so uh, I'm gonna cover sort of the entire building and then Chris will, Chris will cover the theater specific components. Um, so this, what you see on screen now is the overall plan of the first floor. Um, if you remember, this building is set up uh, this new building is set up very much like this existing city hall in which it has two entrances at grade. So 
That big red arrow there is the rec center entrance, and it, has, it, it is at the lower level. The theater entrance and the senior center entrance is also at grade, uh, but it, it is technically the second floor. So um, what you'll see here is um, not much variation in what you saw earlier. Um, to start, big picture on your on your left, uh, obviously the pool components uh, in the middle is all the support spaces, so locker rooms, restrooms, um, indoor play is up there at the top. Uh, the gymnasium is next, and then as you move to the right, um, the theater components. Um, on the upper level, again at ground level, uh, on the upper level, you can reach um, over there on your right. That red arrow gets you into the upper lobby, which is the theater, the senior center, and the community rooms. Um, also up on that top is where you enter in, is the main entrance into the theater um, itself, as well, as well as the administration offices. Um, on the left side of your screen, and um, I'll just start with uh, probably the biggest change you'll see from schematic design. Um, if you remember, previously the uh, running track uh, used to go around and was contained inside the gymnasium. Uh, we had a little bit of extra square footage at the end of that phase, uh, so in order to uh, bring the project sort of back into budget, uh, we found some space um, in the center zone to allow that running track to uh, run around the fitness areas and the aerobics rooms. Um, so that's sort of the biggest uh, sort of wholesale change that you'll see um, on the recreation side. Um, so what we'll do here and the way this presentation is set up is um, that red box in this overall plan will, will key you into a de more detailed plan. So we'll start right there at the rec center entrance. Um, as we said before, that red arrow is the main entrance in. You had a, a control desk right there with uh, smiling faces and pointing you in the right direction. Um, from that control desk, sort of heading down in plan is, is sort of where you pay to play. Everything above that preschool, indoor play, party rooms, um, et cetera, are not, um, are not checked in services. So we've uh, sort of separated that to make it easy for our staff uh, to control uh, who's coming in and out of the building. Um, so at the top here at indoor play, it will be an indoor play structure. Um, and incorporated with that, we have child, uh, child watch area. Um, some of the preschool and poolside classrooms uh, on off hours when they're not programmed for other purposes, um, they are going to use those other spaces for child watch as well, but we do have a dedicated space uh, at all times uh, for that to happen. Directly, directly below indoor play, uh, poolside classrooms. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you've seen party rooms in other rec centers uh, for rentals. That's what that, that is. Um, it's one large space that's divisible by a movable partition. Um, we're also envisioning that uh, those spaces to use for camp, uh, lifeguard training, uh, other meetings, uh, and other rentable space in general. Um, as we move forward here, a uh, quick image for where we're headed on the design um, of the rec center entrance. Um, these are, these are uh, the beginnings of the design. Um, don't tell me you don't like yellow because yellow may not end up in the plan eventually. Um, but um, it, again, it's just to give you the look and feel of, of how the spaces are developing and, and where it's headed. Um, you can tell me if you don't like yellow, by the way. That's, that's totally okay. We might have already, yeah. <laughs> already expressed think, some yeah. opinions. Um, so moving uh, over there to your right uh, is the preschool spaces. Uh, we're st we still have two uh, preschool rooms with one um, center area for storage and workspace. Um, it's also a prep area for the teachers to uh, have things ready for the next session. Uh, each of the preschool rooms will have their own restroom, uh, their own uh, large counter space with storage, a sink, a refrigerator. Uh, all those typical things. Um, you saw the top lot, um, so these rooms also have direct access out to this patio. And then just off to the right there, uh, those stairs you were talking about earlier are right there, so the top lot is just, just right around the corner from the preschool. 
so they have direct access. Um, this is, again, one uh, representative image of how the preschool's uh, starting to take shape. Um, windows to the right look out onto the top lot or that patio space. Um, and then you start to see some of the furniture we're envisioning and all the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, cabinets and storage um, there on the left. Uh, moving over into the water, um, again, not a lot of change from what you saw before. <coughs> this is the uh, leisure pool. Um, so we still have a zero depth entry. We have um, an accessible path that gets you from the zero depth entry down into the deepest water of this pool. Uh, we're currently assessing what type of play features would go into the pool. Um, in addition to that, there's a lazy river, a warm water jetted seating area, which is um, our ode to uh, trying to get a, a whirlpool. It's not a separate body of water, but the jets are um, at different temperature. They're a little warmer than the rest of the pool. so. Um, that's the direction for that, and then. I would just the add that you—that is a change you might recall from the schematic design until now. Some of the feedback we got from you previously, it was uh, the lazy river and the jetted uh, warm water seating were flip-flopped, um, so the team was able to move those. So we had closer access to the locker room spaces um, right off of the deck to get directly into um, that warm water jetted seating instead of having to go through the lazy river um, potentially and have that current on. So that's probably yes, the biggest yes, change yes, that yes, yes, you're right. Um, and then on the left of the plan, the activity zone, uh, that's where we would do learn to swim or uh, we're going to have a basketball court in that area when it's not being programmed. Um, and there still remains a slide tower uh, and run up for a body slide up there on the top left. Um, square pool, six lane, 25 yards, pretty straightforward, no changes from the last time. Um, and moving over to locker rooms, uh, we're further developing uh, the space. We still have, um, at the top of the plan, we still have six individual family or universal changing rooms, um, all outfitted with a shower, a toilet, a sink, a baby changing station, a bench, all those types of things. Um, moving down are the uh, separate sex rest, uh, locker rooms and restrooms. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've also, oops, We've also integrated um, a nursing room that's directly accessible right off the main um, sort of path down into the rec center and directly across from there and, and right off your screen to the right is access to the gymnasium. Uh, if you go right up these stairs, you'll go upstairs to the fitness areas and running track. So the, the locker rooms are right in the core uh, with, with good access to um, all of the functions. Um, next is the gymnasium, and here's just a little view of inside the gym. Um, you see on one side, um, we still retain the track running through the gym, but if you, if you go sort of further away from you in this uh, rendering, um, on that side is the fitness area. Uh, so that's where we're uh, envisioning that goes in. Um, on the far end, uh, you see that stair, which is technically required for egress, but we're look, seeing that as an opportunity for people to do a little bit of circuit training, so they can take the track, head down the head down the stairs, run around the gym, go back up. You know, it's just a, another opportunity that would otherwise be a back stair that no one else would use. Uh, in the gymnasium, we still retain basketball. Um, courts for pickleball, uh, volleyball, all that. Yeah. And as I mentioned in the moment, we are working with the judo club to identify a way to install a lift um, that will accommodate their mats. So that'll take, right now, for those, I think most everyone has seen the mats in our gym, they're giant. Um, and they're great for people to sit on, re rearrange, mess with. Um, and so they have brand new mats that they have not brought into the building yet. So ideally we'll be able to lift those up so they'll be on a pulley system that'll come up to the ceiling. They'll be out of sight, out of mind. They won't take up our storage space and they won't um, be a Damaged nuisance by. during um, or be available for people to pick apart. Yeah, yeah. mess with. 
when they're not supposed to be. So I think that's going to be a really good solution. Um, Judo Club has identified some funding that they would like to dedicate towards that, so we'll work through that with them. Um, once we have pricing and everything uh, finalized, we'll make sure that we have negotiated that with them. That will likely come to you in the form of an MOU. We'd essentially accept that as a grant and make a commitment back to them um, for that installation and access. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so we'll go upstairs now. Um, we'll stay on the rec side. Um, all of the functions that were um, presented previously still remain. Um, you still have two dedicated aerobics rooms. Uh, you still have a cardio uh, and fitness area. So that is distributed um, as cardio equipment up here in these two zones and weights separated uh, purposefully towards the back. Um, we've done that specifically so that the noise and impact that the weights machines make are over all the service areas sort of in the back of the building and all the cardio equipment um, is towards the front where all the noise and stuff from the lobby uh, will start to mix with that. Um, what we've identified as something that we hope to be able to add on to uh, in the future is a outdoor deck up here on um, the east side of the building instead of it was formerly on the west side, uh, which we believe for sun, noise, air pollution, um, all the things, uh, getting it on that side of the building was a huge benefit. Um, you look, it's not quite aligned looking straight down Memorial Parkway, but it's a much better view than looking out at I-25. Uh, so in here, uh, we still uh, retained a wellness space uh, where chiropractic, uh, some PT, and other um, sort of massage, more massage. No massage on the mezzanine level. <laughs> um, where other more personalized functions or programs would take place um, in that space. Um, I think right now, as Amanda said, these sort of just happen where there's floor area. Um, so we're sort of giving them a space for that. Um, and. And uh, if you haven't picked up, uh, this does have an elevator, of course, to get um, equipment and people up and down uh, as needed. Any questions so far? Doing okay? Um, so the fact that it's a little smaller, I think, than it was over the gym, yeah. than it was when it was over the gym. Yeah. So it's a little tighter on that? It's a few more laps per mile. yes. I Her, the direction that we gave the team after, so when we presented the SD, report to you that was before we had the IGMP from FCI. So we did the draft SD report which showed the track in the longer configuration. Um, once we got the pricing back from FCI and we had that gap that we brought to you and we said we had worked on ways to combine it. We described some of these in narrative. This is the first time you're actually getting to see imagery of them. Um, and one of the targets we asked the team to look at was we looked at the overall square footage of the building um, and between the concept, concept phase and the end of SD, we had grown in square footage. Now a lot of that was um, in corridors, in Wall adjacencies, in all of these little tiny pieces that added up pretty significantly. So most of those, I think we talked about slices being taken out, most of those came out of corridors and it was six inches along this whole stretch, which adds up in square footage, or it was a foot out of this corridor. Um, this was the one area where we were able to make the sig most significant change in square footage, and it was expensive square footage, right? There's a difference between unfinished storage room square footage and elevated track square footage when we're looking at costs. They're not necessarily apples to apples. Um, so that was a piece of that cost reduction exercise that we did, trying to maintain all of those elements um, without making, uh, without losing a component that we knew our community desired, um, while still coming in line with the square footage piece. Um, square footage wise, the, that put the fitness area much, much closer to where the original target was. I believe it's still a little larger than the original target, um, but the overall square footage of the building um, is, is within that target. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate the cost savings, but it does look a little tight, that's all. And it's, it's really, it's gonna be a very busy area, that whole thing. The one thing that helped me, can I throw this when when Daniel pointed out to me a couple of days ago in the last workshop, I, when I look at this, 
all I see is that this is a continuous track. When he pointed out to me, this is a wall. Um, so one quarter of that is actually, this is a wall here on this, on this fitness room. Um, so as you pass this point, you're, more en you're entering into that gym space until you cross through this wall here. So when I was able to envision that a little better, it started to get that separation a bit for me. I agree it's still a tighter option than we had, um, but we could add so many square feet in all sorts of places in the building to open things up a little more. Um, unfortunately, every one of those square feet costs us dollars. So the, what I was describing was that track hanging inside the gymnasium here, and then on the other side of that wall is where the fitness spaces okay. would be. And when we did the layout of the fitness equipment, um, based on the budget we had identified for that, um, actually 100% of the budget identified, that equipment fits in this space. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, just a kind of follow-up on what you were saying about it seeming smaller and more narrow. So you s and go to the next slide just really quick because it's a good visual. Um, so how about like the traffic pattern, so to speak, of people like trying to enter and cross over and you mentioned rooms. So one half of it is in the gym, so it's kind of uninterrupted, but it is kind of narrow. And so when you start to have people kind of crossing these paths, I mean, do you have any concerns about that? So uh, what we have done is Everything that happens in the middle stays in the middle. So the stairs come up in in the middle of the track. The elevator comes up in the middle of the track. So if you're going coming from the lower level and progressing to the upper level to go to the weights, you would come up the stairs and then you would end in here. You would never have to cross the track in order to get there. The only thing that is um, not uh, doesn't follow that rule is this cardio right. area up here, um, which we have a sort of a crossing. If you see, uh, we're trying to identify a, a, a good spot to cross over right there. And that um, explanation is good. I was kind of envisioning more crossing of the paths to yeah. get to spin. If you're going to do a cardio workout, we want you to want you have to run fast and not traffic anyway. Run across the track. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions upstairs? Rec side, makes sense, okay. Um, so thank you for leading us to this next one. Um, so this is just, again, a visual of when you're standing sort of in the gymnasium looking back um, towards the fitness areas. Um, some nice big glazing that looks down into the pools. Um, this is the, the um, spot where the, uh, you would look out towards more Parkway and hopefully we'll be able to afford the outdoor patio that um, would be, you would have, a, we would put a door there and you'd go out from that side. So pricing with the base price right now, what we have included is the structure for a future patio um, and the construction of that glass to allow for a, a, a door to be more easily placed. Ideally, as we refine budget and get closer and closer through construction and we look at those contingencies open up, um, we would just do that as a part of construction. Um, right now, though, it is definitely in the add alternates list that is not accepted um, at this stage of the game. Um, but we didn't want to eliminate that forever. <coughs> so it could be five years, if we can't fit it in during the construction budget through contingencies or other savings, mm -hmm. it doesn't eliminate our ability to do that install at a similar cost later. But uh, I, would I, say I say similar. Increased cost. There is not because it's a whole project in and of itself. But it doesn't add additional components to do it. We're not, we're trying not to um, make it so that there's new structure that needs to be put in or significant modifications. Um, it would be the finished work that would be necessary, which is more expensive as a separate project, um, but not additional yep. work. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments before we move on to sort of the other side of the building? Yeah, we're trying for that. Yeah, like the It's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on the other side of the building, again, uh, we're now uh, sort of the main level, quote unquote, is is upstairs uh, from where we started, which was downstairs. 
Um, so the at grade entrance is over here. Uh, this is the other lobby that we're looking at on this side. Um, so as you come into uh, the, the main doors on this side, um, we actually just talked about it in a, a workshop last week, not reflected here. Uh, we're changing the door configuration um, on the exterior side of this vestibule to have uh, a single door, I think, is where we're headed, uh, that says sort of senior center, a pair of double doors in the middle for the theater, and then another single door on the left side that says uh, community rooms or multi-purpose rooms. Um, they still deliver you into the same vestibule, um, but we're hoping that gives, um, well, first of all, we're hoping it gives the rush of people a great way to just get out of the building when the show's over. Um, but it also gives a little bit of identity right on the outside of the building for each of those ancillary spaces. Um, so it's not reflected here, but we're, I think we're headed in that direction. Uh, so up at the top, Senior Center, uh, directly behind that, um, administration spaces, and on the bottom of the plan, the community rooms uh, with the warming kitchen. Okay. Um, so, and the, we'll start right here on the bottom in the multi-purpose rooms. Again, not a lot of change from what you've seen previously. Um, it's one large space with two uh, movable partitions, which allows uh, three separate rooms or any uh, combination thereof. Um, there's a direct connection um, via a, a door that, um, or rolling door that slides up with a counter. Um, access to the catering kitchen or warming kitchen, um, so you can do food service uh, directly without having to, you know, cart stuff around. Um, so that's great. Um, we're trying to allow for some separation in the event when there's uh, a big function happening at this exact same time that a show is happening, so that you can get into the vestibule, get into the multi-purpose side, they have their own restrooms, they have their own access, they have their own way to go without too much mixing or confusion, um, if we can help it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yes, in each of the rooms they will have their own, it's probably hard to see, but these little lines right here, each of them will have their own TV. In addition to that, for the largest configuration when there's no partitions extended, there's going to be a projection screen and a projector there. Um, each will have their own um, audio system with voice amplification and sound and all the support equipment. Great. I know it's awful at the senior center right now. Like you cannot hear even with the little handheld microphone. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about last week was the ability to have the same thing showing on four, all four of those screens, or to have three different things happening. Um, obviously, the sound, the wall in between is a movable wall, so it's not a soundproof wall. Um, so some so consideration would have to be given to conflicting uses, um, but it does provide that flexibility to have something different or to duplicate the image. Okay. Um, so we've um, come up with uh, a first plan or first idea of what we think those multi-purpose rooms might look like. Uh, set up with round tables, um, all of the partitions uh, sort of folded back and extended so you see the full breadth of what that may look like. Um, so moving on, again, we're sticking with the uh, upper level. Um, we've worked closely with Amanda and her staff uh, to provide an adequate centralized administration area um, so they're not spread out all over the building with four printers because you know you have to walk right now you had to walk across the building to get a piece of paper if you only had one um, so I think we're fairly set on private offices open workstations uh, space for seasonal staff uh, a little break area for them um, etc and right now the way we divided staff were all the staff who don't sp operate a really specific space are here together in this administrative space. The staff who have an area of the building that they operate, such as the pool, 
preschool classrooms or the fitness area are do have those remote workspaces that are within the area that they are operating. Um, staff like the sports staff where they're, they might be out in the park, they might be in the gym, they don't have a space that's really theirs. They're assigned um, within the administrative area. Uh, sticking upstairs, uh, we're up in the far uh, top right of the plan. Uh, so uh, normal access would come in off the main uh, vestibule here into the senior lounge. Uh, that's where you'd have uh, the welcome desk, the coffee bar, more comfortable seating. You know, that's where the books will be, where you hang your coat. Uh, all those types of uh, social activities. Uh, and in the upper uh, portion is a senior multi-activity room, so another multi-purpose space uh, where they can do a multitude of things again. Uh, we will have uh, AV in this as well. Uh, we're putting in an assisted listening system in this room uh, to allow seniors to uh, hope, use, the, use their hearing aids if, they, if they're so enabled or a mobile device or will provide a, a RF loop so that they can borrow the, the system and plug in to that as well. Um, directly to the left of that in blue is the restrooms, uh, main restrooms for the upper level for the theater. Uh, and then right off the screen there again is an elevator to get you up and down uh, between levels on this side of the building. Uh, so here's just a, 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 our, our rendering of the inside of the senior lounge. Uh, just past you in these windows here uh, is where you where your main entrance would be through the vestibule. You come in that senior lounge. Uh, again, it's that sort of living room feel with coffee and comfortable furniture. Um. I'm having some separation here. Right now, when you walk into the current Sainer Center, um, you've got that kind of elongated area, greeting area at the front. Um, but if you've got something then like Tai Chi going on in the, um, I still call it the tile side. It hasn't had tile in I don't even know how many years. Um, we always refer to it as the tile side and the carpet side. Anyway, the, the, to the left of that front door, we often have something like Tai Chi going on. Well, someone walks in and wants to register for a program or sign up for a breakfast or, and they're trying to speak to the staff and they're getting the Tai Chi folks looking at them because their class is being disrupted. Um, so having this have a door in between should provide some better separation to allow for that one-on-one -on -one social component to allow somebody to get coffee without feeling like they're disrupting what's going on in the activity space, to allow for staff to provide resources or register a participant um, and be able to talk freely without trying to do those hushed whispers so they don't disrupt a program that's happening on the other side of the space. Uh, so we'll move on to the theater. Any questions on that side of the building in terms of the senior side and the multi-purpose rooms or community rooms? Great. Thank you. Musical chairs. Thank you. Great to be back. Um, some of the things that have happened since we were last with you, we did make some structural modifications to the theater to capture some cost savings in terms of height of the audience chamber and those kinds of things without reducing any of the functional characteristics of the space. So we still have got catwalks for safety for technicians. We've still got greater height above the stage for scenery and performance technology than in your current facility. We've still got a, a larger stage with more wing space. So I think all of the changes that we talked about making for cost reasons have not have had an impact on functionally making this a higher quality space uh, for your folks. And if uh, I recall correctly, some of that actually was an additional benefit to us from a sound perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, as uh, I'll just kind of follow the lead. Uh, darn, took my turn part. Not that one. There it is. Sorry. So as uh, Daniel was talking about, we have our upper level at grade entry here with the senior center on the right and the community room on the left. And, and again, one of the things that is so important to this whole building is the synergy of all these program components, how they complement each other. So understanding that there are going to be times when uh, the arts programs use 
two or one of the community room spaces for rehearsals or camp or those kinds of things, giving them a good backstage connection to get down to the dressing rooms and the stage level of the theater was important so that we share well, um, giving the lobby space the ability to serve the community room and the theater at the same time for organizations that might have food along with a performance was important to how we organized the space. And so that continues to be important. So you come directly in the entry from the south parking lot into the lobby and you are faced with the box office and concession bar here with an office for our house manager and then two entrances, each with a sound and light lock. That's a vestibule with two pairs of doors um, to bring you into the theater to help isolate it from uh, sound from the lobby space. Can I suggest you maybe go forward a slide yep. and we'll zoom in Thank a little you. more for yep. you? Uh, I was just finally realizing that. Um, so, so there's the organization of that space, so easy to navigate and straightforward to come in, either here on the auditorium left or the auditorium right. And then around the corner, back by the restrooms, is the, is the further expansion of the lobby that leads back to the administrative space, but also the stair that takes you down to the cross aisle level of the theater. So when you come in, either of these two entrances, you enter the theater and you walk down on the side to reach your seats. Those are the seats that are more steeply raked for an accentuated sight line. Um, and then at the same floor level as the lower floor and the stage is where we have our cross aisle, which features a fair proportion of our accessible seating. So we'll have accessible seating both at the top and at the cross aisle. And then the two aisles leading forward toward the stage are our accessible path to reach the musician's pit for musical performances. So I'm, I'm highlighting the ADA provisions because they're working in several different ways for us. On the sides of the lower seating section, those arms uh, or pathways remain level. So we are flat from the cross aisle to the stage which allows even a person who uses a wheelchair to come forward for a recognition ceremony or a civic ceremony or to participate as a speaker as well. The rectangles here in the front of the stage denote the area that instead of being hard architecture will be platforms that can be raised or lowered to create a pit for musicians or can be up at stage level to be a, and a performance area to give kind of the capability that you currently have, but have to do a lot more effort to create. All right, so as we move forward in the lower level. Go, 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 go back to that same slide you had right there. Yep. So how did, <clears throat> how did they get to the lower floor? So uh, a patron. Right. A patron. So a patron would choose either to use this elevator or this stair. No, no, I mean to the performance. You have, you have the incline and then you have the flat level, That's right? The theater. You'll actually see that better on the next slide okay. because right. the stage, I don't know if you recall, but there was an image in the SD report, and we didn't put it in this one, um, where it showed you a cut. And the stage is actually all the way at the bottom of the lower level, and the entry is at the top level. So even though they're all in one space, from inside the theater, you see a whole level of differentiation. Right. So you actually access the stage either from all the way up here or um, from the lower level itself. Then, uh, there, we do have a rendering in here that'll, that'll help visualize there one in there? some okay. of that. But, but you're absolutely right. So at the, at the same floor level as the gymnasium and the pools and the rec center entry and that sort of stuff, we have the stage and all of the essential working areas. So the stage, the scene shop with its loading dock that brings you in this direction, our prop storage area, our rehearsal hall, our back of house restrooms, our dressing room. So all of those things surround the theater at the stage level but are below most of the seating. So that way we keep the public and the performers and technicians separated in most cases. But to answer your question, Mayor, when you come down either the elevator or 
the, the stair from above, you arrive here in a public lobby and can walk in to the cross aisle of the theater. And from that whole area, all of that is flat. So we've also got a couple of offices for uh, Amanda's staff who work specifically in the theater and technical area and a pair of solo dressing rooms in case we've got adults performing with kids, that sort of thing. Um, and up in the corner, our costume shop space. So as we zoom in, just talking about the seating, we've got our control booth up at the very top. So that's where the technicians work. And Christopher asked us specifically for a location where he could run a show and run lights and sound and projection all from one space because there are so many times he's the solo uh, technician in those. And this also puts him in the house yes. space, which was really important. He hears, if he's in the box, which used to be up high, now is even in the back, he hears something different than what the audience is hearing. So he was doing a lot of back and forth of running down, hitting play, running into the uh, house where the audience would be hearing it, hearing things, going back into the space, making that adjustment. Uh, this should really streamline that approach so that he's able to make those adjustments based on what he hears, which is the same thing as what the person sitting in the audience would be hearing. That's right. So we've got accessible seating locations flanking that control booth at the top, as well as here distributed across the width of the house uh, in the cross aisle. Um, but all four of those positions, you can see, are located in that lower or front section of seating. We're at a total of 335, including six ADA seats um, in here. Um, and uh, as you can see, the rectangle of the stage seems incredibly obvious, but when you've been working in the diamond-shaped stage of the Parsons Theater, this is a big improvement. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the other thing above the audience area are the catwalks and follow spot positions located in the rear corners of the theater so the technicians and particularly the kids who may be training can get up there safely, learn how to use lighting instruments and those kinds of things and not be on ladders and not be over the heads of people who might be in the theater themselves. There's that drawing. There's that drawing. How about that? So there's your lobby entrance up at the south parking lot level. You come in, you walk into the theater past the concession bar and box office. You have a follow spot location above you, but then you walk down through the upper level of seating. There's the cross aisle with doors entering or exiting from either end. The lower seating, which is sloped at a one in 12 to give us our accessible path to the thrust or pit location so that when we have musicians there, we can actually enable not only a person who might be using a wheelchair, but rolling of music instruments and other kinds of things that are just much, easier, much more easily done from a ramp position. And here's the catwalk above uh, for the safe lighting location. So as we look at that in rendering form on the left, there is the cross aisle, so there's the door with the elevator and lobby and uh, stair up beyond. So we're looking from kind of the dressing room side. And there's the slope of the ramps going down toward the stage. And this is a performer's perspective looking from the front edge of the stage up through the ramp seating in the front section, which is only eight rows deep, um, to get back to the cross aisle and then the more steeply raked tiered seating leading up to the control booth in the rear. So here's all that you're seeing all the way to the stage and the stage left wall where the counterweight rigging will be. Um, and there's the cross aisle and the first row of that rear seating area steps up so that you are giving the folks who are seated in that row uh, a sightline advantage. Any questions? Can you see anything from the deep? Yeah, actually, um, it, it looks very high right now, and that's kind of the forced perspective. At a couple of our workshops, we have brought sightline views for the staff and, uh, and construction team to see as well, and we'd be happy to circulate some of those. I think the 
not only not only is the view for patrons very good, but we're also paying attention to the view from the follow spot platform, which is the highest area, because we need to be able to aim the follow spot from there past this acoustical reflector to get the light onto the performers on stage. Okay. And we asked some similar questions. They actually even took us to some spaces that had um, a similar proportion, and we went and sat in random seats, and somebody sat on stage. I think we even put you on a stool at one point to bring you to the height of a child. Yep. Uh, so we definitely played with those sight lines yep. and how that would look in the space. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Thank I you. think we're gonna turn it back to Daniel to talk a little bit about the exterior of the building. Um, we have we probably had the most conversation or the most developed conversation at this point about um, some of the finishes on the exterior. Um, so what you see looks a little, I think, looks a little more representative of the materials that we're actually um, moving towards and that FCI has quite included in our pricing um, model at this stage. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, what you'll see, what you see here is not a, a vast different from what, difference from what you've seen uh, in the past. Um, we've uh, figured out how to make things more efficient, uh, not by wholesale changing the design, but by finding more efficient ways to do things, finding materials uh, that are more within our you know, price range <coughs> and sacrificing uh, overall quality or longevity. Um, so what you see um, here is the main entrance on the rec side. Um, as you remember, um, this would be the area where uh, the sort of fitness patio would be if we can get it. Um, and then to the right of your screen uh, would be a sun deck in front of the recreation or leisure pool. Uh, and then you start to see the slide over here, uh, just peeking into the screen there. Um, the drop off in the front um, for the rec side of the building. Um, the next one we have here is the south entrance, again at grade for <coughs> the theater side, theater senior uh, multi-purpose side uh, of the building. Um, so the main entrance obviously is right here at the front, seniors on the right, um, and on the left are functional, the functional back house spaces, the kitchen and the restrooms uh, on that side. Um, and then just one other view um, of that south side uh, looking north. Um, the, the grade here actually, this is where the hill starts to drop down uh, to the other level. It's not perfectly represented uh, in that picture you see here. It's kind of floating out in space. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, used, we took some creative liberty with the ground and just decided to make it, you know, fly in the air. Um, uh, but you, you start to see how uh, sort of the building, uh, the two entrances are associated with each other. Uh, and that on, on your right here, uh, one is a great view of the senior patio, which is, again, at grade uh, with the entire senior center. It just gives them a spot to, uh, to do something outside, too. Okay. So I've got a question. Yes. <laughs> um, you said that it walk in and you see the theater um, and you see the senior center uh -huh. sign but then there's another senior center pointing out yeah um, why are we having two so close together like that when you're right there by the theater I don't that was what Daniel was alluding to earlier when we were talking about signage and on the doors um, okay. so we had talked that was instead of it the senior center verbiage being on this front facing wall and then again around the corner Right. taking it off of around the corner and putting it on that doorway. Yeah. Um, part of the reason it landed on that corner was we really want to make sure everybody wants this identity and we're trying to create that in a lot of different spaces, whether that be for the active recreation use or the theater use or the senior center use and trying to find a good balance there. Yeah. Um, but we think we've maybe reached that with the door solution instead of the signage again on the building. Yeah, we really want to highlight the theater and it just kind right. of takes away when you have the senior center sign right there, you know, so. We're, yeah, we're trying to honor all of those I, unique uses. I, I get it, you know, but I'm just, you know, so it just kind of jumped out at me that you had multiple senior 
signage, but only one of the air side. Yep. <laughs> and you can't see it. They're actually in this imagery is a second theater sign as well, okay. um, which is on the left side of the wall. Uh, see it. Yeah. Because of the perspective there. See oh, you can it see it from right that view. There, it's yeah. Just in the wrong. So if you look in from the yeah. other way, you're seeing that uh, okay. second theater sign. But we're working on that signage package still, and what makes the most yeah. sense. Got it. Okay. Anything else on the exterior of the building? Great. Thank right. you. So I will wrap things up here with a little bit. We've start, as we've talked about, we've started our public engagement process on some of the individual components. There's still a couple others that are outstanding. Um, we want to make sure we reach children and families um, throughout the community for the indoor play theming. Um, we'll likely do some outreach through, we think that would be a good social media outreach. It gives us a chance to hopefully reach our young families that we don't always see every day. Um, and then for our senior users with our outdoor patio and our furniture within the facility, um, we've talked about a really hands-on approach for that one. I mean, bringing some furniture in, letting people sit in it. What what works well to get in and out of? What works well to slide nicely across a floor? Um, those are all things that we have encountered as challenges um, with furniture in the senior center. So we'd like to give them a chance to sit in a chair, try it out, um, rather than trying to pick from an image or a look. Um, we feel like the function is the most important piece there. Um, from there, our next steps, um, we intend to bring forward next Monday um, that contract addendum with FCI for the site FGMP um, and we'll be ready for the official groundbreaking on Monday, October 28th at 5 p.m. Invitations have gone out. Those were done in print um, to city council, to former city council, to boards and commissions, to project stakeholders. Um, they were mailed to homes. They were also um, provided in mailboxes to city staff. We really want that to be a celebratory event um, and invite those who are directly connected to the project, but we really would love the community to come out and join us as well um, and celebrate this milestone. We are asking for an RSVP, but we promise we won't turn anybody away. If you don't RSVP, it just helps us with a food number um, so that we can be pre prepared somewhat. With food is provided. Food is provided. Ignore all the other details. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Big time food's provided. There you go. Food and fun. Um, but we would love an RSVP just so that we can get a little bit of a head count and not be short on food. We want to be able to serve everybody who comes and joins us. With that, I'd be happy to take any additional questions that you have, either about the project or where we're headed. No, that's pretty exciting. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so amazing. We are excited as well. So very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, we will right. see you back here in a week with Nathaniel and a contract in hand. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Further business for council? Thank you. Saying that, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Yeah.